Nama Om Vishnu Pataya Krishna Pustaya Bhutale Shimati Bhakti Vadanta Swanti Namani Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Vachalini Deva Sisha Sunivari Pashtatara Satarini Jai Sri Krishna Jaitanya Prabhu Nitananda Shri Advaita Katadhar Shiva Sari Gauravakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare All right so I was just having a little read of what we're going to be covering today, at least the first few paragraphs. So we're continuing with chapter 17, uh, specific examples of Sankalpas. And um, Maharaj has given a um, synopsis of some of the Sankalpas that one may make in the beginning of their devotional service. And then Maharaj is now going to give a short summary of some Sankalpas that in the subject of Sankalpa, which comes in the stage of spontaneous devotional service. But he's only going to give like a, he's going to speak about that for a couple of pages. Then he goes into describing about um, Sankalpas in regards to being situated in Varna and Ashram. So just to let you know where we're going. And let's have some readers. Mother Chandravali has a hand up, so you can read first. Let's see, let me just put it might be some more. Yeah, and Anupama can go next. So you can so we're on page 317. Sorry. 317. And beginning, perhaps you can just um, backtrack and go to 316, the bottom of the page. Yeah, let us briefly consider. Okay. Ready, everybody? Ready, steady, and go. Let us briefly consider how the two verses paraphrased above would apply to a devotee drawn to natural attraction. The actual sloka says, the slokas are, the advanced devotee who is inclined to spontaneous loving service should follow the activities of a particular associate of Krishna's in Vrindavan. He should execute service externally as a regulative devotee, as well as internally from his self-realized position. Thus, he should perform devotional service both externally and internally. The devotee should always think of Krishna within himself and should choose a very dear devotee who is servitor of Krishna in Vrindavan. One should constantly engage in topics about this servitor and his loving relationship with Krishna. And one should live in Vrindavan. If one is physically unable to go to Vrindavan, he should mentally live there. The basic for entering spontaneous devotion is to be advanced in regulated devotion and to have an inclination for Raj Bhakti. An advanced devotee is one who, for a considerable time, has been steadfast in keeping the vows of initiation and in practicing the regulative principles of sadhana. This steadfastness could be said to be a marginal characteristic of eligibility. The prime, primary characteristic of primary characteristic being the inclination to serve in the way of Rajvasis. The inclination to obtain Radhatmika Bhakti is an advanced sadhaka's impetus for Rag Bhakti. Srila Prabhupada's use of word inclination speaks to an interest in or liking for something and implies that the practitioner should not yet have it. However, by diligently studying Srila Prabhupada's books such as Chaitanya Charitamrita, an advanced sadhaka's blossoming attachment will be increasingly inspired by Krishna's personality and decreasingly by his divinity. In this way, by hearing more and more, natural attraction becomes stronger and more assertive, and in time it becomes fully spontaneous. This predisposition towards spontaneous devotional service is an aspect of self-realization, wherein a practitioner intellectually understands that being Krishna's eternal servant means for him being a Rajvasi, 
this is the foundation of his Siddha Rupa. Rupa Goswami explains that this attraction is primarily intellectual. When an advanced realized devotee hears about the affairs of the devotees of Vrindavan in the malice of Santya, Rahdasya, Sakya, Vatsalya, and Madhurya, he becomes inclined in one of these ways and his intelligence becomes attracted. Indeed, he begins to covet that particular type of devotion. When such covetness is awakened, one's intelligence no longer depends on the instruction of Shastra or on logic and argument. The word Shruti indicates that unless a devotee already has spontaneous attraction from the previous birth, interest in rag bhakti can be awake by hearing from an advanced devotee or by studying scripture. In other words, an intelligent devotee will come to the conclusion that spontaneous devotional service is more pleasing to Krishna than regulative service and that he has to make efforts to cultivate it. After all, this is what is explicitly stated in Srila Popa's books, for example, in Chaitanya Charitamrita, we find Krishna's thinking in the following way. All the universe is filled with the conception of my majesty, but love awakened by that sense of majesty does not satisfy me. Hare Krishna, perhaps we'll just pause there. If we're going to ask if there's any questions or comments on this. It's a subject which we're quite familiar with in our readings, I'm sure. We've read quite a bit about this. Mm -hmm. If there's any questions on it. Marge has given a basic outline here. And... Mm. If not, we can read on. I just... okay. Yeah, I was still, I'm still thinking, I know it's like performing devotional service, one will get to that point when you know who, which devotee in Rajwasi, you, which devotee in Rajwasi you will follow. But who are we? Who are we? Yeah, we actually yeah. don't know who we are. Yeah. A big problem. <laughs> I am thinking, it, it, it's not that you thinking about that, but I just want to understand how will that happen? It will happen when it happens. That's no problem. But well, Marge has explained it here. He's explained the first stage in that and how it happens. Yes. Um, yeah, in the different like Santa Dasya, Sakya, Vatsalya, yeah? Yeah, in essence, how it will happen will be very <clears throat> natural be very natural and that's important to understand that it won't it's not something artificial and Marge speaks about that in the next couple of pages it's not something that we imagine mm. not something that we dream up it's something that's revealed so in that sense that's what it means that it's very natural yeah because it's the most natural thing you can experience everything actually in comparison to that everything else is unnatural our relationship as mother uh, grandmother or daughter or son or whatever it may be in this world is unnatural compared to that original relationship with Krishna and Maharaj how that comes about well he's given these mentions this is just a summary of it he mentions the, the prerequisites for it of course one is steady so one is at least at the stage of nishta yeah um and then one has an inclination for that. And that inclination is going to come. What is, uh, what is, uh, I just gave it away in one sense, but what does Marge say? Where does, how does that inclination come from? He said it there. But books. Yeah, that's it. By Prabhupada's books. Yeah. And maybe other books as well. So it comes from hearing. And then one has a, um, Marge mentions here, one has a first stage, it's more of a, uh, what do you say that? It's more of an intellectual, intellectual, an intellectual attraction. 
In other words, you read about it and you hear about it. At least we know that that's, where, that's the direction that we want to go. That's the specific perfection of our spiritual practice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we continue hearing. Marge will give more details, a little, a couple more details. He doesn't go into it very deeply. But in essence, it's having a having a hearing about and then the consequential desire to also have that same type of um, yeah, or to render that same service. Yeah. And perhaps we'll read on the bit next couple of pages, we'll give a bit more details. Mm-hmm. Anyone else has any questions on this? These two verses that Marv quoted is from Bhakti Masmuta Sindhu. Um, on the discussions of Raghunuga Bhakti, these verses are very important. Sava Sadaka Rupena Sita Rupena Chatrahi. Yeah. Marj often quotes these verses. Yeah. Yeah, a lot could be said about it, but perhaps let's just read on a little bit more and just come to the end of this section. If there's any other questions on it, yeah. You can continue reading if you like, Marvin. And just and a little further on in the same passage, Krishna discloses that the purpose of revealing his pastime to the world was to attract devotees to the practice of Raganuga Bhakti. Then by hearing about the pure love of the residents of Raj, devotees will worship me on the path of spontaneous love, abandoning all rituals of relig- religiosity and fruitive activities. This interest is in spontaneous devotional service as a function of the intelligence will impel a practitioner to take vows to cultivate spontaneous devotion through hearing and remembering Krishna's Raj Leela and Raj Associate. At this point, we should raise the red flag that Srila Prabhupada so often waved. A neophyte to Raganuga Bhakti should not speculate about the, his relationship with Krishna nor should he imagine himself as serving him. This kind of guesswork will only deviate him from his aspiration. A sadhaka should be patiently confident that in the way hearing and namsan kitan lead to the inclination for spontaneous service, in that way they will also cause maturation of the same. Mm-hmm. This said, readers may note that in the previously mentioned verse, beginning with Seva Sadaka Rupena, Rupa Goswani is what advises one who is seriously inclined to Raganuga Bhakti to become an avowed, avowed follower of an associate of Krishna. One may ask, how can such a sankalpa authentically manifest? By continued hearing under the guidance of a spiritual master, a devotee will become attracted to one of the five kinds of services to Krishna. And in time, those same devotional activities will awaken attraction to one of the associates of whom a sadhaka hears. Readers may note that the wave of raga is not to immediately identify as an associate of the Lord, but rather to identify as the follower of an associate. As an aspirant for a certain type of service, in this way, attachment to that kind of identity and service develops, and along with such attachment, so too, absorption develops. In the words beginning with Krishna Smaranam Janam Chasya, Rupa Goswami further guides a practitioner to another sankalpa. And that Sankalpa is hearing and speaking about the associates of Krishna, whom he follows. Much more could be written about the vows that Rupa Goswami advises for the devotees practicing Raghunuga Bhakti. To serve that purpose, the topic of determination is Rag Bhakti. Rag Bhakti, yeah. Rag Bhakti, through the stages of Nam Bhajan, is described in part six of this book. And for further information on the subject of spontaneous devotion in general, readers may refer to the 
authors previously published work entitled Awakening of Spontaneous Devotional Service. Okay, perhaps we'll stop there. And um, so just make one um, point here. Marge makes, speaks about sankalpas in regards to um, activities of Raghunuga Sadhan. So Marge mentioned earlier that these sankalpas sometimes don't get the wrong meaning when we heard when you hear the wrong the word sankalpa that it may mean like a public or a very um, formal thing. He mentions that it's done in different ways: voluntary, public, or private, essential, or general or personalized so it may just mean it may just mean for instance in this specific subject Marge is speaking at present it may just mean that you just decide oh i really want to read more about krishna leela and i really want to read about the details you know i really want to read hear more about it i want to read krishna book i want to read chaitanya Tamrita, where these descriptions are there nectar devotion and also other books uh, that give details. You understand? It's just a simple personal acclamation to oneself. So don't when we hear when you hear the word sankalpa, don't get the idea that you know. You understand? I just so it can be just we probably a lot of you, probably all of you are making sankalpas already in different ways in your personal application in spiritual life. So this is one. Marge gives an example. Where and there's much more. Again, Marge has given a little summary. Any mentions? Okay. Yeah. You read that? Did you read what you read up to? You read up to the four asterisks, yeah. 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 So Marge has written a book. It's a small book. If you're interested in this subject more, um, there's a nice book that Marge, just one second, I'll just get it. It's this book here. It's called The Awakening of Spontaneous Devotional Service. And it's, and it's uh, very small. It's not a hard read. And it's a good book to read to give you a good grasp of its application in our ISKCON society. I'm just doing another little study of it at the moment. Um, so if you're interested to read more about the awakening of Raghunuga Sudden or Raghunuga Bhakti, this may be a place that you might want to go. It's a small read, and um, I've done a little. Have you got in the shop, Muli Prabhu? This one, um, I don't know. I, I can okay. check, I can check. Um, perhaps well, if, um, you, if yeah, if not, just send me the mother Gaia's with us, so she you can tell us. Yeah, I wouldn't mind that. Nice, yeah, thank you, Gaia Mother. Are you with us today? No, I can hear you. What's the question? Do you have this book in the shop, Mother? The it's Awakening of Spontaneous Devotion. Uh, it's Shivaram Swami's. I'll, I'll check out yeah. and let you know okay. tomorrow. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I've done, a, I've done, I put it into slides a long time ago. It's very interesting. But if you want to, you can read more there, you know, because it's not the subject of Sankabu Kamudi, although it, it will be spoken of more. But anyway, any questions about it? Or any questions, specific questions that come? If not, we can. So these sankalpas are not like uh, you don't just sit back and say, okay, right, I'm going to do it. It's internal. As you. Yeah, it may be a private decision. Yeah, like a private. You go along. Uh, yeah, something like a private determination. Yeah. yeah, I think like, is it like, Muli, probably like, obviously, when you're doing something, praying, and it's a praise, private between you and the Lord, isn't it? It's, yeah, you like may that, isn't yeah, it? yeah, you may choose to keep it private. That that's nice. That's good. Depends on the particular sankalpa that you make. Hmm. And uh, actually, the next chapter, let me just read, is called "Making a Sankalpa." <laughs> so, hmm, that's good. The next chapter is exactly about that. Yeah. So we'll read more about that. Um, but it's good to um, sometimes I make sankalpas and uh, then I unmake them that, like unconsciously two months down the road and I'm not reading what I made it determined to read. 
a determination to read. So you have to, we have to, um, and I have to again um, reapply myself to a particular sankalpas that are being inspired to make in the past. So that's something to look out for. You know, you may be inspired to make a specific sankalpa, say learning verses, uh, Bhagavad Gita, or you know, particular specific topic. You know, chanting 32 rounds a day, you may make specific sankalpas like that. But then six months down the road, nine months down the road, and it's gone. <laughs> that's good because they're on the symptoms of unsteady devotion. So that's something to look out for. But isn't it right, Muli Prabhu, that don't sankalpa, which you cannot do it, don't overdo it, it's whatever you can yeah. manage. Yeah, yeah, that will be, I think, we've spoken of. That we know in relationship to vows for Kartik, that's often brought up. Um, yeah, so you should, yeah, that's a good, yeah, that is a good point. That's probably why we may not be able to um, maintain some Sankalpas, but sometimes it just means we may get distracted. We just forgot because we're, too, you know, we're so busy. We've got other things we focus on. And other things lose it, and then we lose that focus on one thing to focus on another thing. Yeah, this is my personal um, issues I have because I make so many different sankalpas to read this, to do this, to study this, to do that. And then I get inspired about something else and I go in another direction. It can be a bit, it can be a bit haphazard. But we're here, we're here, but we might not get to that chapter today. Let's see how we go. But the next chapter, 18, is all about making sankalpas. So we're going to hear more about that, um, the do's and don'ts and how to do, et cetera. All right? So unless there's any other questions on this, we can let Mother Anupama read from 320, if I got that right. Just beginning scriptures provide. Yeah, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Shall I start? Yes, yes. The okay. floor is yours. <laughs> Scriptures provide many disciplines through which devotees may purify their consciousness and advance towards transcendence. The authority of an institution of duty bound to select those vows that are most relevant to his followers, as is a spiritual master for his disciples. For example, based on the principle of Guyor Hitam or living in the Guru Kula only for the benefit of the Guru, Srila Prabhupada directed his followers to Narad Muni's vows or Brahmacharya for men and women. And Srila Prabhupada's entreaty to his followers was that they daily, they daily participate in either Nam Sankirtana or book distribution. Currently, the membership of the Krishna Conscious Movement is spreading mainly within its congregation, the majority of whom rarely adopt the student life or evangelism that Srila Prabhupada prescribed. And while such believers may follow the basic tenets of their faith without adopting the culture vows prescribed by founder, it is questionable whether they have the spiritual foundation or the bountiful grace needed to make trouble free advancement towards Bhav. Related and important Sankalpa that Srila Prabhupada set out for his followers was to adopt the Varnashram social order upon which ISKCON could trans, trans, transit from being solely a church to a broad-based spiritual society. And all the most of the duties of the ashrams have been followed since ISKCON's early days Srila Prabhupada envisaged that the principles of one ashram would be adopted to guide all aspects of life, including education, leadership, laws, and members' social duties, the varnas. Like the Brahmachari ashram and missionary zeal mentioned, the social foundation for sadhakas is suffering from neglect. Even its relevance to ISKCON often comes under question, despite Srila Prabhupada's clear instructions regarding its importance for our neophyte devotees. The following excerpt from a well-known conversation is one of the many that reflect his divine grace desire. Prabhupada, therefore Vana Shram Dharam is required. Simply show bottle will not do. 
so the one ashram dharam should be introduced all over the world. Satsvarupa, introduced starting with ISKCON community. Prabhupada, yes, yes, Brahmana, Kshatriyas, there must be regular education. In his books, his Divine Grace founder, uh, sorry, further encouraged his followers to adopt one ashram as a means to come to and progress forward in pure devotional service. He wrote, therefore, since the Sanatam Dharam system, one ashram is eternal, one can elevate himself to the highest standard of spiritual life by following the Vedic principles. In addition to the overarching system of one ashram, are other vows of both varna and ashram that are optional, although gen generally regulated by one's nature. For example, a brahmachari may or may not decide to get married, although his superiors and astrological reading may provide a clear vision as to which option would be best for him. However, whether brahmachari or grihastha, a man must follow the do's and don'ts of his ashram because the proper execution of dharma helps situate him in goodness and hence in pure devotion. Krishna gives the following principal duties for members of the ashrams. The brahmachari should serve the spiritual master. The grihastha should give shelter to others. The vana prastha should practice austerity and the sannyasi should teach the others orders. And while it is not compulsory for a brahmachari to become a grihastha, or for a grihastha to become a sannyasi. It is compulsory for a grihastha to become a vana prasad. A serious devotee makes such social commitments as both a way to instruct others and to further his own spiritual journey. And it is important that every sadhaka bears in mind that all the vows that, that he takes must be constructive to the goal of developing and attaining love for Krishna. Another vow related to the dharma of grihastha is one of charity, a vow that is not an ingredient of devotional service, but which helps a grihastha adopt the right mentality for bhakti. As a quality created by Krishna, Sila Prabhupada says that giving in charity is the main function of a grihastha. And while one may be charitable in many other ways, including opening one's home to others, the most ge generic way to be charitable is to give in charity a percentage of one's income. Srila Prabhupada is quite specific in this regard. To give charity is one of the householder's main functions and he should be prepared to give in charity at least 50% of his hard-earned money. Once again, the vow of giving in charity is compulsory, but the amount seems to be optional. In the quote above, Srila Prabhupada speaks of giving it at least 50% of one's earnings, and at other times, he encouraged householders to give according to their means. While all giving helps in freeing one from the concepts of I and mine, donating one's wealth is perhaps the most practical as it, as it fulfills all kinds of needs. And while all kinds of charity are beneficial for both the donor and the recipient, Charity must con must conclude. Is it conclude? Must. must uh, what word is that? Conducive. Is charity it? must. Conducive. Must. Uh, Con charity most conducive. Yeah. Oh, conducive. Yeah. I'm feel sad for the donor in which one, which is in the mode of goodness. Krishna describes the kind of giving in the following way: charity given out of duty without expectation of return or the proper time and place and to a worthy person is considered to be in the mode of goodness. The Lord's instructions show that there are different ways to make vows and according to the mode of nature in which a vow is taken, a different benefit is accrued by the donor. Of all persons or causes to benefit from charity, the best of those that directly serve Krishna and the best service to the Lord is that which facilitates others' devotional service to him. An example of a charitable cause is building a temple or being one of many donors who builds a temple for the deity of the Lord. Krishna says that depending on the motive, such a donor attains either spiritual perfection or unlimited wealth. 
one, one can just imagine the absorption in Krishna of a person who works to construct a home for the Supreme Lord. Such absorption certainly results in spiritual pleasure that inspires the donor to render further service and to advance spiritually. Like the example of building a temple, a Grihastha devotee may make sankalpas relating to some project that furthers the mission of the Krishna consciousness movement. Such was Srila Prabhupada's expectation from his followers. Okay, perhaps we'll just pause there. Thank you, Mother. Very nice reading. Uh, any questions about this? A few topical issues here. Mm. Moving to the Vanaprastha Ashram. Um, yeah. Move on. Oh, giving in charity. I think we discussed that before. Um, Prabhupada often speaks of uh, giving. But Maharaj, through his study, he's, although Prabhupada did say many times, 50%, since Prabhupada was all, as also just in general, he, he would encourage, he would bring up this point of charity as a dharma of a grihasta. Um, so, ja, just for your interest, uh, my guru Maharaj in uh, his zone in Hungary, then generally he, he doesn't, uh, they don't ask 50% from their grihasta devotees. They ask at least 10% if they're going to do a tithing. They at least give 10%. Of course, some are giving more, and some give more than 50%, apparently. Some. <laughs> I don't think many. But the general, uh, you know, that's a general Sankal, but that's a general uh, in regards to Invana and Ashram. So, in one's Ashram, there's specific Sankalpas that one will make. Yep. And in the Grihasta Ashram, which Marge mentions that, that actually, um, there's more of you than there is of us. <laughs> There's more of you in the community, in the Grihasta Ashram, than there is the persons like me, Brahmacharis. We are outnumbered. <laughs> so, and there is different Sankalpas one will make in that regard, um, according to social duties and Nirvanas. Yeah. I like the Maharaji saying it's compulsory for a grahasta to become a vanaprastha. Yeah. So I have... Like all them days, okay, they would go away forest or this or that. How they see a grahasta can be vanaprastha, but okay, you stay at home, but you kind of have your own separate kind of life. Yeah, in other words, you kind of uh, organize yourself, you, you, you organize your situation so that you're doing more spiritual cultivation and, you, and you've got more time for hearing and chanting. That's the whole point of reaching a certain age, you know, where children have grown up, etc. <laughs> Excuse me. So it doesn't take on the same form as you read in Shema Bhagavatam, so don't worry about that, where you have to dress in tree bark <laughs> and go to and go to um, Clapham Common. Sit in the park. Live on the tree. <laughs> no. But what if you can't sit under the tree then? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <It's> difficult. <laughs> so, but here, you see, what we do see, we see practically um, now, well, I think we're seeing more, more of them. We're seeing uh, Prabhupada. Um, Grihasta disciples, uh, married couples, of now a lot of them, I don't know a lot, but a good few are traveling, you know, sharing their wisdom, preaching. Sometimes, well, I forget what the names were. We had a husband and wife, a uh, Vanaprast couple, come through two or three years ago, quite prominent in their yatra. But they're traveling uh, different temples throughout the world, having a tour of ISKCON. Some 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 Vanaprastas do that. They have a tour of the temples in Iskon, in in the Iskon world, you know. So they will go and they from there, because that's the idea. At that age, you have wisdom, not just about spiritual life, but you have wisdom about how to live. You've had many experiences in life, so and that's also why um, devotees or aspiring grihastas 
I often advise that sometimes devotees ask me, I mean, I mean, what do I know? <laughs> but who has to ask you know, then I, I, I advise them to go and seek, to go and speak to those who are stable in a stable grihasta situation. And they've got lots, they, lots, lots they can share. Anyway, Marge is bringing this in into the subject of, interestingly, of Sankalpa. So according to your situation, Vana and Ashram. So if you haven't, I'm sure, I'm sure many of you, according to your means, are being charitable. According to the means, you've got your favorite projects you like to give to, I'm sure. But that's, that's a Sankalpa that as, as a Grihashta devotees, they, sh they should be doing. Right, of course, according to your means. Any other questions about this? Oh, oh. Wise, I can read on, and perhaps I'll just read to the end of the chapter. We've just got a couple more pages, just two pages. And then let's just check the time. Oh, we might get a peek into the next chapter. Let's see. Um, I remember we had that discussion with, uh, I remember that discussion of 50%. We had quite a robust discussion with um, Jambavati. I don't know if she's with us today, but she was asking. We, went, we had that, I mean, quite a lively discussion on that. You know? No problem here. What about? Yeah, I remember you was asking about 50%. Ah, yes. yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. So I think the conclusion was you should be in the, um, yeah, you should, the conclusion was that you should ex be in the mood of giving, you may not be able to give 50% because practically speaking, you might not be able to maintain your situation. But just to be in the um, mood of giving where and how you can. You know? All right. Yes, thank you. Yes, yes. Yes, this is absolutely. And, and whatever, if we uh, can think that everything I do, even I make shopping for my family, but actually I make shopping uh, vegetables and fruits for Krishna. I'm thinking what I'm cooking for Krishna. So it, it comes like 100% actually. Yeah, yeah, that's another point. Yeah, that's it. Why well, give 50%? You give your whole life. Everything's for Krishna. Yeah. The house is exactly. for Krishna. The kids are for Krishna. You're going to train the kids up to be devotees. You're going to, you know, everything you offer, everything you eat, you offer. Yeah. Yeah, good point. Why 50%? Give 100%. Uh -huh. yes, yes. All right, let's read these couple of pages. Having touched upon vows relevant to the Vanashram system, let us conclude this section by examining a few vows repeatedly recommended in Srimad Bhagavatam. One vow is to show respect to all living beings. This Sankalpa is an aspect of sadhana in which a devotee sees the Supreme Lord in every living entity. While the respect offered to different living beings is shown in different ways, the Lord directs his devotee to show esteem for his presence within all his faculties, with all his faculties. He says, until one has fully developed the ability to see me within all living beings, one must continue to worship me by this process, offering obeisances with the activities of his speech, mind, and body. Um, let me just check a reference to that. Be quick. Let's think it's uh, Shima Bhagavatam, Canto 11. Is it? <laughs> After Krishna liberated them from the confinement as trees and transformed them into pure devotees, Nalukuvara and Manigriva also vowed to worship Krishna in all things. Praying to the Lord for the empowerment to do so, the two dumb demigods said, May our heads offer our obeisances to everything within this world, because all things are also your different forms. Okay, so this may be something which you um, may not spontaneously have realization of. 
but it's an instruction that's given in the Shema Bhagavatam. That's how we are told to see the world. So even if it's intellectually done, it's it can really, um, yeah, even though it's intellectually done, it, it is quite profound. It's quite a profound practice, but it's not easy. I have experience with that where I've tried to go out with this in my mind, that everyone I interact with, I will directly try and think of Krishna within their heart. You know, it helps on book distribution as well to keep your consciousness in some type of good state. But it's not easy because we're conditioned souls. But it's a practice that you might try to do as you interact with devotees or even non-devotees, just the same as when we take darshan, at seven o'clock, the curtains open and you see their lordships. You know, you're in a type of meditation there. So imagine you try and do that with everyone you meet. You're actually meditating on that. They're part and parcel of Krishna and Krishna is in their heart. There's someone who does this and he's, and he's, uh, see if you know, there's one Maharaj who does this. And he's the personification of this. And he's got it, and he's perfected this. This is how he views everyone. When he's speaking to someone, he's, he's, he speaks in a very penetrating and personal way. And he quotes, there's a verse in Bhagavad Gita that, that, that explains, after Tatvidi Panipatena, Paripasena, the next verse describes, um, no, not that verse. Was, yeah, that, yeah that one should learn to see everyone as part and parcel of the Lord. This is the instructions that one gets from the spiritual master. Can anyone name that? Name that Maharaj. After all, Maharaj should do that. You ask them yeah. through you and they, they know where you're coming from. And Yeah. But specifically, I'm speaking of uh, Keshava Bharati Maharaj. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was thinking of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I don't think there's a lecture where he doesn't quote this verse. <laughs> it's become his, um, you could say, it's his Mahavakya, and that's why he was so good at questions. He is so good at questions and answers, and he's so good with people because he's actually seeing them as being very uh, special and very unique. Yeah, and I've met other devotees like that as well who treat you like you're very, they treat you in a very, um, as if you're special, as though we're not to one degree or another. I guess we are, we're devotees, but um, they have a very, this is, you know, point of making, this is a, this is a um, Sankalpa, this is a meditation, which they're in Bhagavatam. And you can try it. Try it, you know, try to, as you know, um, when you're shopping in Tesco's, think of the person that till <laughs> it's been part and parcel of Krishna. Sometimes it gets difficult, especially when the persons might be giving you a hard time. Yeah. So next time, i sorry if I mentioned this joke before, next time a parking attendant tries to put a ticket on your car, instead of having desire to shoot them, <laughs> Try and think of them as being parts and parcels of Krishna. It is a test, though. It's not so easy. Someone who steals your steals something or anyway, let's let's go on. Yeah, go. Can I ask something? Yes. You know, please. I've been trying to cultivate my neighbor. So today, um, I give one of your mangalati sweets to them. I always give. Them oh, great. Yeah, and then um, she, the girl said to me that uh, I gave her chanting beads, bead bag and manchatattva mantra and all that. Then she said to me, oh, I started chanting, but I'm only going to chant on Sundays. Uh -huh. I said, oh, but um, have you got somewhere I can um, hear somebody and then chant with that person? So I said, okay. Then I was thinking, okay, I will send her proper med meditation chanting, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah. And I said, well, do you have you been hearing something? She said, yeah, I have, I've been hearing something. And I said, well, show me what you hear. And guess what it was? On YouTube, she found Prabhupada chanting, and she showed me that. She says, I found this the best chanting in all the ones that I've been hearing. Wow, that's directly Prabhupada. Yeah, so that's a 
seeing Krishna within, you know, in everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. That's the way it goes. I, if you... Yeah, I was so shocked that how she got proper chanting from YouTube to help her. You know, she said, this is the best meditation. It's the sound is so nice and it's so peaceful and, you know. Yeah, so that's an example of uh, where you see, because, you, because you're Krishna conscious, then you see everyone as a devotee and therefore as a potential to reviving their practice as a devotee, you know. So therefore you try and influence or try and preach them in some way. Because they're parts and parcels of Krishna, but they don't, they, they, they have forgotten it. So you see it as your, you know, duty in order to give them an opportunity to become Krishna conscious. Yeah. Wow. Keep us, you have to keep giving us an update on how your neighbors become Krishna conscious. I'm sure in a couple of years time, they'll be taking initiation. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm really, I wish I could connect them to some girls because at that age. And I said, what about your two sisters? Shall I? Uh, give them feedback. No, no, wait till they get to that state. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you for sharing that. All right. Let's try and read. Finish. The, let me time check. 52. Let's just, um, where was we? Um, another vow in the same vein, though more generic, is to learn to see Krishna not only in animate, but also inanimate things. Okay. In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna gives many examples of how once, in one sense he is everything, like the taste of water, the light of the sun, the scent of the earth, and so on. Srila Prabhupada would often instruct his disciples on how to adopt this vision in order to easily see Krishna, not Maya, in the world around them. This is chapter 10, also chapter 9 of Bhagavad Gita, the opulence of the Absolute, and also chapter 7 as well chapter 7 chapter 9 chapter 10 you can read it while 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 this is the sadhana of ganis it is one that a regulated devotee may adopt in order to purify his consciousness the theme of not seeing things separate from the supreme transcendence is one that permeates shima bhagavatam a theme that is recommended as an intellectual determination for a devotee to adopt until that time when he naturally sees Krishna everywhere. That stage of perfection is described by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in this way. Stavhara Janganama Deki Nadeki Tara Moti Savatra Haya Nija Ishta Deva Shputi. The Mahabhagava, the advanced devotee, certainly sees everything mobile and immobile, but he does not exactly see their forms. Rather, everywhere he immediately sees manifest the form of the Supreme Lord, unquote. In addition, Shima Bhagavatam also emphasizes other sankalpas, such as the vow to follow Ikadashi. And while fasting from grains on the 11th day of the moon is compulsory, there are a variety of options open to a devotee on how to observe his fast. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu instructed his followers to completely refrain from eating and drinking. While Srila Prabhupada, seeing his disciples unaccustomed to austerities, said that so long as no grains were consumed, Ikadashi was about feasting, not fasting. <laughs> so wherever a devotee eats nothing, drinks only water, eats only once, or feasts without grains, he must adopt the Sankalpa of following the Ikadashi Vrata. That vow, like the regulative principles, is compulsory for all Vaishnavas. Other Vaishnav literatures like Hari Bhakti Vilas also stress the importance of Vaishnav holidays, which a devotee is obliged to observe, albeit in different ways. On festivals such as Jamastami, Ram Navami, and Gorapanima, it is compulsory for a devotee to fast. Some take a vow to, to cook all day, others to chant extra rounds, and others to read aloud from Shima Bhagavatam. All vows taken for the pleasure of Krishna are certainly an impetus for attachment to him. Conversely, a devotee who does not follow the minimum prescribed observance will create obstacles to his spiritual advancement. In his Bhakti Rasmita Sindhu, Rupa Goswami gives a list of 64 devotional activities prescribed for devotees, beginning with taking shelter of a guru, 
accepting initiation and instruction from him and following the predecessor Acharyas. A practicing devotee must be conversant with these methods, their proper execution, and the risks of neglecting them. Success in devotional service will be dependent on perfecting these sankalpas. Similarly, Sanatana Goswami's Hari Bhakti Vilas and other Gaudiya Chari's books are full of vows that are either ob, ob, obligatory or obligatory. Excuse me. How do you pronounce that word correctly? Obli, ob, obligatory. Ob, yeah, obligatory. Obligatory. Yeah. Yeah, obligatory or optional. We have mentioned only some that are well known to the followers of Srila Prabhupada. Progress on the path to love for Krishna becomes more exacting as a devotee approaches his goal. And then a sadhaka should know the relevance, relevance of the various determinations he makes. Examples of the five count kinds of sankalpas have been mentioned in the previous chapter. In conclusion, there are many vows that a devotee can accept through his occupational duties, the way of perceiving the world and his devotional practices. Krishna consciousness is a spiritual science and a devotee must be conscious of the determinations that are ob obligatory and those that are optional. Sankalpas are of different kinds and those who are wise in their quest for the goal of life know the difference between them, how to embrace them, and how, and even how to give them up. Hari Om Tatsat, Hari Krishna. So let's finish there. Uh, next week we can begin Chapter 18. Any questions on this final part of this chapter? Any comments? Uh, no, Prabhu, but I heard from the manager of the boutique, and we, she said we don't have the book you're after. Okay, book not available. I guess she might order it and just at the moment. Yeah, it's not available at the moment. So Hare Krishna. So we're being asked, I think again, I think we mentioned this before, but we're being asked to be internally alive, like internally um, looking for means and ways by um, by which we can advance in our devotional practice. You can see from reading this and, and hearing this study that there's a lot more to just making four vows at initiation. <laughs> That's just the beginning. There will be many other vows and determinations which, which we need to make. So I think the idea in this study is that we can take the steps needed to actually get to the goal. If we just, you understand it, we, one step at a time. One step at a time, sweet Jesus, as they say. <laughs> one step at a time to make determinations of where we are. We heard about some today. Um, we heard about a couple. We heard today about um, the determinations or, of someone who's kind of entering into the practice of spontaneous devotion. They're going to read about uh, the Radrasis, for example. Then we heard about um, Sankalpas or determinations according to uh, the ashram that we are in as well. And then there's the general Sankalpas that, that everyone does to observe festivals. And within festivals, there's different determinations that, um, that you may have or how you take part in festivals. So it's all about, in one sense, it's about us going forward and not just sitting back and waiting for Krishna to zap us with prema. <laughs> we have to kind of, we have to be very active in uh, going forward. You know. Uh, any uh, final comments on that? Otherwise, we pause there for today. Can I quickly tell you another little thing about this neighbor thing? They have a friend yes. who's got four and a half year old son. He was taken, he goes to Hare Krishna a little bit, but he was taken to a Jain temple and a Swaminarayan temple okay. and couldn't accept it. He couldn't, he was like, he didn't like it. And when he was really? taken to a Krishna temple, four and a half years, he was running around like as if he belonged to that place. Wow. wow. What temple is that? Is it one of our temples or like a local? Yeah, what, what, 
when they took him to Watford, he okay, he, back to the manor. He knew what to sit down, clap his hand, do things. You know, it was possible. Right. Today I gave him a plate of arti. I made up an arti tray because he mm. loves offering arti, jamara and kiwi, and all sorts of things. And I gave him that. Just say the power of devotee association. I'm just saying, no, it's just uh, within the super soul guiding how he was taken to three temples and he couldn't, he couldn't. He didn't gel with it. No, he couldn't gel. Great. I'm, I'm just looking like the, our class, like Krishna within, you know? So yeah. With, have you seen so Krishna in each of these people and then how we can like, yeah, so you got doing you like kind of fanning the spark. So you have to be yeah, it's up to them. After that yeah. is people, but well, you try yeah. your best to. And that's your Mangalati sweet you made on Saturday. I took two, one for them, mm. one for the people. And yeah, it's a very good example. Actually, we're seeing, I'm sure all, all of you can relate to this as well, is um how much to encourage people. Because yeah. because because you if you give too much too too quick, they're gonna go the other way. They're going to close the door on you. So you've got to be very intelligent of how you might um, go about winning them over first to trust you, to be friendship, and then how much, in what way do you tell them, instruct them to take up Krishna consciousness? And you're not going to do it like give them a Bhagavatam class. <laughs> you're just going to. You know, be friendly and loving to them as Mother Chandravati is doing and show all of you have your experiences out there in the world, preaching to people at work and neighbors. Yeah. All right. We'll stop there for today and uh, let's get together tomorrow for more Sudha Bhakti Tasamani, some questions. Okay, we'll sign off here. Thank you. Okay, thank you, everyone. Thank you. 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 Thank